Welcome to Terminology in Healthcare and Public Health Settings, the Nervous System. In this unit, we will review the nervous system. The objectives for this unit, Nervous System, are to define, understand, and correctly pronounce medical terms related to the nervous system. Describe common diseases and conditions with an overview of various treatments related to the nervous system. Let's start with a brief overview of the anatomy of the nervous system. The nervous system is composed of two major divisions, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is composed of the brain and the spinal cord. The brain is encased in the skull, and the spinal cord is encased in the vertebral canal. The brain has three protective coverings. These layers, or meninges, are the pia mater, the arachnoid, and the dura mater. The pia mater, the innermost layer, is a thin and delicate inside covering. The arachnoid is the middle layer, with subarachnoid space, which is filled with cerebrospinal fluid. The dura mater, or outer layer, lines the inner surface of the cranium, or skull. The brain and spinal cord receive, store, and process the body's sensory and motor data. They also control consciousness. There is also cerebrospinal fluid in the ventricles of the brain and surrounding the spinal cord. The largest part of the brain, the cerebrum, is divided into two major portions called hemispheres. Both hemispheres allow you to analyze sensory data, to perform memory functions, to acquire new information, and to allow decision-making. The hypothalamus assists in the regulation of appetite, heart rate, body temperature, water balance, digestion, and sexual activity. It is located beneath the cerebral hemispheres. The cerebellum is the second largest part of the brain. It helps coordinate movement, including balance and muscle coordination. For example, it receives information from one of the sense organs in the ear that detects body position and sends these impulses to the muscles to assist in maintaining the body's posture. The medulla oblongata is the enlarged portion of the brainstem. The pons connects the cerebellum and the medulla oblongata with the upper portions of the brain. The peripheral nervous system refers to all the nervous tissue that is outside the brain and spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system is composed of the cranial nerves and the spinal nerves. As you can see in this slide, there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves that carry messages to and from the brain. They are referred to using Roman numerals, but also have a name associated with their function. Familiarize yourself with this listing of the cranial nerves and their major functions. There are 31 pairs of spinal nerves which branch off from the spinal cord. The spinal nerves carry messages to and from the spinal cord. In the cervical region of the spinal cord, the spinal nerves exit above the vertebrae until the seventh cervical vertebra. At that point, the spinal nerves begin to exit below the equivalent numbered vertebrae. The spinal nerves which leave the spinal cord are numbered according to the vertebra at which they exit the spinal column. For example, the spinal nerve that leaves at T4 exits the spinal column through the foramen in the fourth thoracic vertebra. Let's move on to the various disorders and diseases of the brain. Dementia is a brain disorder that seriously affects a person's ability to carry out daily activities. Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementia among older people. Alzheimer's begins slowly by first involving the parts of the brain that control thought, memory, and language. Over time, symptoms get worse. People may not recognize family members, forget how to brush their teeth, and eventually may become anxious or aggressive. Eventually, people with Alzheimer's disease require assistance with all the activities of daily living. 
Alzheimer's disease usually begins after age 60. No treatment can stop the disease. However, some drugs may help keep symptoms from getting worse for a limited time. Another brain disorder involves an abnormal bulge or ballooning in the wall of an artery in the brain. This is called a brain aneurysm. Most brain aneurysms produce no symptoms until they become large and begin to leak blood or rupture. Symptoms may depend on where in the brain the aneurysm is located. Symptoms could include a droopy eyelid, double vision or other changes in vision, pain above or behind the eye, a dilated pupil, and numbness or weakness on one side of the face or body. Treatment depends on the size and location of the aneurysm, if infection is present, or whether it has ruptured or not. There are two main types of brain cancer. Primary brain cancer begins to grow in the brain. Metastatic brain cancer starts somewhere else in the body and moves to the brain. Brain tumors can be benign without cancerous cells or malignant with cancerous cells. Symptoms include headaches, nausea and vomiting, changes in your ability to talk, hear or see, problems with balance, problems with thinking, muscle jerking, and numbness or tingling in arms or legs. There is no known cause for brain cancer. Treatment depends on the type of cancer and how advanced the cancer is. Another serious brain disorder is called epilepsy. Epilepsy is a brain disorder that causes people to have recurring seizures. The seizures occur when clusters of nerve cells or neurons in the brain send out the wrong signals. There are many possible causes of epilepsy, including illness, brain injury, or abnormal brain development. Sometimes the cause is unknown. Diagnostic tests include brain scans. There is no cure, but medicines can control seizures for most people. Other treatments include surgery or implanted devices, such as vagus nerve stimulators. Parkinson's disease is a disorder that affects nerve cells in a part of the brain that controls muscle movement. In Parkinson's, neurons that make a chemical called dopamine die or do not work properly. Dopamine normally sends signals that help coordinate movements. Symptoms include trembling of hands, arms, legs, jaw, and face, stiffness of the arms, legs, and trunk, slowness of movement, and poor balance and coordination. Parkinson's usually begins around age 60 and is more common in men than women. There is no cure, but a variety of medicines help reduce symptoms. A cerebrovascular stroke occurs when blood flow to your brain stops. Within minutes, brain cells begin to die. There are two kinds of stroke. The more common kind is called ischemic stroke and is caused by a blood clot that blocks a blood vessel in the brain. The other kind, called a hemorrhagic stroke, is caused by a blood vessel that breaks and bleeds into the brain. Transient ischemic attacks, or TIAs, occur when the blood supply to the brain is briefly interrupted. Symptoms include sudden numbness or weakness in the face, arm, leg, sudden confusion, trouble speaking, seeing or walking, dizziness, loss of balance, and severe headache with no known cause. Treatment includes drug therapy with blood thinners. Arteriovenous malformations, or AVMs, are defects in your circulatory system. The circulatory system includes the arteries, veins, and capillaries that carry blood to and from the heart. An AVM is a snarl tangle of arteries and veins. It interferes with the blood circulation in an organ. The cause of AVMs is unknown, though they develop during pregnancy or soon after birth. The greatest danger is hemorrhage. Treatment is in the form of prevention and can include surgery or focused radiation therapy. 
Meningitis is the inflammation of the meninges, the thin tissue that surrounds the brain and spinal cord. There are several types of meningitis. The most common is viral meningitis, which develops when a virus enters the body through the nose or mouth and travels to the brain. Bacterial meningitis is rare, but can be deadly. Symptoms of meningitis include a sudden fever, a severe headache, and a stiff neck. Treatment can prevent serious problems, including death. Vaccines can prevent some of the bacterial infections that cause meningitis. Multiple sclerosis, or MS, is a nervous system disease that affects your brain and spinal cord. It damages the myelin sheath, the material that surrounds and protects your nerve cells. This damage slows down or blocks messages between your brain and your body. Symptoms can include visual disturbances, muscle weakness, trouble with coordination and balance, sensations such as numbness, prickling, and thinking and memory problems. The cause of MS is unknown. MS affects women more than men and usually begins between the ages of 20 and 40. There is no cure, but medicines may slow it down and help control symptoms. Physical and occupational therapy may help also. Bell's palsy is a condition where the muscles in your face become temporarily paralyzed. It usually affects just one side of the face. Symptoms appear suddenly. You cannot shut your eye and your mouth droops. Symptoms are usually worst about 48 hours after they start. Scientists believe that a viral infection makes the facial nerves swell or become inflamed. People who are pregnant, diabetic, or sick with a cold or flu are more likely to have Bell's palsy. Patients usually improve with or without treatment within two weeks, and most recover completely within three to six months. The carpal tunnel is a narrow passageway of ligaments and bones at the base of your hand. It contains nerves and tendons. Sometimes the thickening of the tendon or swelling in the area narrows the tunnel and causes nerve compression. Symptoms include inability to grasp objects and sharp pain through the wrist and up the arm. Causes vary, but some are work-related. Women are three times more likely to have it. Treatment includes resting your hand, splints, anti-inflammatory medications, and surgery. Peripheral nerve disorders, also called neuritis or peripheral neuropathy, interrupt the messages between the brain and the rest of the body. There are more than 100 kinds of peripheral nerve disorders, and they can affect one nerve or many nerves. Some are the result of other diseases, like diabetic neuropathy. Others, like Guillain-Barre syndrome, happen after a virus infection. Still others, like carpal tunnel syndrome, occur due to nerve compression. Symptoms include numbness, pain, burning or tingling, muscle weakness, and sensitivity to touch. Treatments aim to treat the underlying problem, reduce pain, and control symptoms. Neurofibromatosis is a genetic disorder of the nervous system. It mainly affects how nerve cells form and grow. It causes tumors to grow on nerves. You can get neurofibromatosis genetically from your parents, or it can happen because of a mutation or change in your genes. Once you have it, you can pass it along to your children. There are three types of neurofibromatosis. Type 1 causes skin changes and deformed bones and usually starts at birth. Type 2 causes hearing loss, ringing in the ears and poor balance, and often starts in the teen years. The third type, schwannomatosis, causes intense pain. It is the rarest type. There is no cure for neurofibromatosis. Treatment is directed at controlling symptoms. Depending on the type of disease and how bad it is, treatments may include surgery to remove tumors, radiation therapy, and medicines.
Here are some additional key word parts for the nervous system, along with their meanings. In the third column, you can see some of the medical terms that we can create by combining word parts. You should return to the online medical dictionary to hear the pronunciation and become familiar with the meaning of the created terms. And finally, use your detective skills to study the case described on the slide and see if you can come up with a diagnosis. Did you guess an aneurysm? A brain aneurysm is an abnormal bulge or ballooning in the wall of an artery in the brain. They are sometimes called berry aneurysms because they are often the size of a small berry. Most brain aneurysms produce no symptoms until they become large, begin to leak blood, or rupture. The symptoms associated with an aneurysm can include droopy eyelid, double vision or other vision changes, pain above or behind the eye, a dilated pupil, numbness or weakness on one side of the face or body. This concludes the nervous system. In summary, you should be able to describe and pronounce medical terms related to the nervous system. In addition, you should be able to describe common diseases and conditions with an overview of various treatments related to the nervous system.